want to be a Blue Peter presenter. I love watching the show. Why did you want this job and who inspired you the most? It is literally the best job in the world, the best job in telly. You get to meet the most incredible people. You get to go on adventures. You get to do challenges. You get to jump out of planes and get strapped to the wings of planes. It really is that job that just gives you enough opportunities and life experiences and adventures to dine out on pretty much for the rest of your life. In terms of gold badge owners that inspire me, I'd have to say Tim Peake is up there. I think he's incredible. Um, I was lucky enough to interview Steven Spielberg, which was just one of the most surreal, brilliant, ridiculous pinch me moments of my life. The one that I haven't had yet, who I am desperate to meet and chat to is Michelle Obama. She inspired, actually her and Barack Obama both really inspire me, but especially Michelle. I read her book and I loved it the way she kind of speaks and holds herself, the things that she stands for and what she believes in. She really, really inspires me. And she's someone that I would absolutely love one day to interview and to have on the show. One of my favourite parts of watching Blue Peter is all the challenges. If you could choose one to do again, which one would it be? I'd say the funnest day of my life was when I got to wing walk with Radzi. He was strapped to the wing of one plane. I was strapped to the wing of another. We flew into the air. I went upside down, hung above his head in midair as we did a loop the loop and I passed him a bat on. And we were the first presenters in Blue Peter history to actually get the challenge done and do it successfully, which is all down to the pilots, of course, nothing to do with myself or Radzi. But it was just one of those days of filming where the day finished and we just gave each other a massive hug. Sometimes people don't think about what goes on behind the show. They kind of just see the presenters and see them at the front of the camera. But how important then are the people behind the scenes? There's no show without the crew. That's the end of it. You might watch Strictly and think it's all Tess and Claude or, or you know, people who watch Blue Peter think, Oh, Lindsay and Richie are doing a good job. No way. It's it's all crew. The job couldn't be easier. We're saying what we're told to say. What the people watching the show don't see is that script was written and signed off by a producer who had to have meetings with the researchers and the assistant producers about it, who had to go away and find the right contributors to put in that. I mean, the, the work already before you've even arrived in a studio is mad. And then on the day, you've got a whole new people with a whole new set of skills you've got incredible live directors camera guys who, who've been doing this job for so long and are so good I mean I, I really go on about it and whenever I post stuff on like my Instagram and social media I'm always shouting out the crew because they are genuinely what keeps Blue Peter and any show together it's all on the crew You've met all sorts of famous faces, people in the arts, actors, royalty, Greta Thunberg more recently. Which person or people really stick in your mind? You know what? I actually am really unprofessional in those interviews because I always ask the question and then I'm just, I remember doing this with Sir Paul McCartney. I was just gazing into his eyes for half the interview, just going, oh my God, that's Paul McCartney. And I completely wasn't focused. So that was probably actually looking back, not a good interview at all. Cause I just, I just, you have those moments in interviews where you're like, I cannot believe this is happening. Um, the ones that stick in my mind are definitely Paul McCartney. He's a really good storyteller. He's got loads of anecdotes and he's very funny. Um, Ed Sheeran, just for being definitely the nicest person I've ever interviewed. Greta, just by how impressed I was by her, just kind of blown away by how young she was and yet how much she's achieved and just how eloquently she spoke and she was so calm. And I was just, again, that was another one where I just, I was half listening and half just going, that's Greta, what? Um, Tim Peake as well, just because I was talking to someone who had just been living in space. And again, that was just a really weird thing to get my head around. Like, what are we doing what is my job what are we talking about he was a great one so when you're preparing for a big interview with someone like Paul McCartney um how do you prepare for that you do more research than you think is possible you write more notes and do more googling and you 
you almost, you know, when you go into like one of those YouTube holes where you're like, why have I, why am I watching this? I need to go to bed. You need to almost do that, but with a person's life, just get into a hole of like, this is all I'm looking up. This is all I'm thinking about. I'm breathing, eating and sleeping, thinking about this person. Um, Cause preparation is key and you just don't want to get caught out kind of not knowing something or it's always good to reference little bits. I think the more you prepare, the better the interview will go. So for someone like Paul McCartney, I mean, obviously start with the music, but then go into their life as much as you can. Upbringing's a great one. And think about the audience as well. You know, for, for Paul, for me, it was trying to work out how he got into music to get him into the Beatles, to get him to where he went with his life. That's interesting to a Blue Peter audience because loads of kids are watching who are thinking about what do I want to do when I'm older I'm into music could I play the guitar maybe I could be in a band like the Beatles and you want to you want to spark that kind of enthusiasm so it was important for me to kind of rewind with him so I think it's about thinking what you want to get out the interview as well but preparation is key given your experience in the media industry what are your three top tips for anyone wanting to get into broadcasting be yourself it sounds really obvious and it sounds a bit corny and a bit cheesy, but no one else is you. All you can bring to the table is yourself and your personality and your life experiences and, and you, that you can't bring anything else. So you may as well just own that and be proud of who you are and let that come across on screen. Do your homework, get ready to work really hard because it is a tough industry. And there's so many times where actually just being a hard worker and getting your head down and doing the work, whether that's reading the script or doing the research or helping the team out is so, so important. So do your homework, be a team player. If I've learned anything on Blue Peter, I mean, working on a TV show is like becoming part of a family. You're not in it on your own. You're in it with the team. So be friends with the crew, be polite to everyone, treat everyone the way that you'd want to be treated and just be nice, be a team player. And I've got an extra one, little cheeky one. Number four is remember that it's just telly. It doesn't actually matter. It's not a real job. You get to work in telly for a living and you get to mess around on screen and be a presenter. And it's just telly. It, it, if you're ever getting stressed or overwhelmed by like scripts or stuff you've got to do, I always just come back to what's the worst can happen. It's telly. It doesn't matter. Enjoy it.